Hey guys, welcome to this special video. I'm Two Sushi and I'm here with my very close friend, Josh Phoenix. Today is, at the time of recording, is the 20th anniversary of the Sega Dreamcast uh, release in North America. And to celebrate this, we're gonna go through what we uh, collectively mm. think is the uh, top 10, top 10 yeah. all time greatest Dreamcast games. Um, as you'll notice from the blue cases, these are all PAL releases. Uh, there were quite a few PAL games that never made it to uh, US. Uh, so we're going to go through what our top 10 is and then we're going to go through a few uh, honourable mentions. So we really hope you like this list. Um, it's a lot to talk about because it's such a, a, a historic console. Mm -hmm. And as we always say, it's such a shame that it never really truly uh, took off uh, commercially. But um, it's left such a, a lasting mm -hmm. legacy, hasn't it? Um, it is, it's such an underappreciated console. Yeah, yeah. That's, that, that is for sure. I mean, the power it was pushing, it actually had more power than the PlayStation 2. However, you know, PlayStation with DVD technology um, and, and the catalogue that they bought, you know, yeah. eventually not many systems could last unless they had money like what Xbox did for Microsoft. I mean, it, the, the Dreamcast came out at an interesting time, didn't it? Because uh, the PlayStation was still at its prime, you know, mm -hmm. 98, 99. Mm -hmm. The N64 was doing okay, but then the Dreamcast kind of, the marketing let it down really, and especially in Europe and Japan. I mean, America was- I, I mean, America always been in charge of doing Europe's campaigning, advertising, marketing, yeah. which, I never understood why, because Europe was such a bigger market than the US, yeah, collectively. Yeah. Um, like I said, again, a lot of the games the US decided which would be released into Europe. Unfortunately, they never chose half the uh, best ones that could come here. But we just appreciate the games that did get over here. We got to play uh, as kids. We, we got you know. Shenmue 2 on the Dreamcast in Europe, whereas mm -hmm. uh, America didn't. They didn't. So, so uh, th that upset quite a few people, but um, I mean... The, the Dreamcast, it was technically the first home console to feature an arcade um, oh, kind of I mean, system. Th that that was the whole point of the Dreamcast, that you had an arcade. 60 frames, yeah, 60 frames. 60 frames a second, uh, you had an arcade in your own home, and a lot of the games were designed around that factor, that you're playing an arcade. So you're having that enjoyment yeah. at home. And you could say it was ahead of its time, wasn't oh, it? But massively. But massively. some of the games we're going through innovated uh, a lot of games that we have today and a lot of these uh, have been remastered mm -hmm. for you know subsequent consoles but uh, the Dreamcast definitely did mm -hmm. make its mark in the, the world of gaming and, and you'll they, find that on eBay obviously a lot mm -hmm. of people are going after these games and I mean, the consoles especially. A, lot, a lot of the games are if you've got them in good condition not even sealed in good condition some of these games are going for 150 pounds like Skies of Acadia some you can get yeah. for seventy five pounds. Some people are, you know, selling it in mint condition for one hundred and fifty. And there's a game. Uh, it's just a mention out there. I've never played it, but I was looking at Dreamcast. It's called Evolution Two. I've got Evolution One. Uh, unfortunately, didn't get time to play because I was so interested in this top ten we've got. <coughs> but uh, Evolution Two, if you've got a mint copy, it's going for around about two hundred to three hundred pounds. Really? Yeah. Wow. Uh, Ridiculous yeah. uh, uh, game, even well, I didn't know existed, but again, great. limited edition. So, uh, yeah, as well, um, <coughs> with that being said, Shenmue's always been quite expensive oh. on eBay, but I reckon a lot of fans who love Shenmue today discovered mm. Shenmue from buying it on eBay based I mean, on word there, of mouth. With Shenmue, there was a lot, because of PlayStation 2 coming out with the Yakuza game, there was a lot of comparisons, but again you've got to give it to Shenmue that was the pioneer uh, took a lot of years to develop it started on the Saturn originally the development and uh, carried over then to the Dreamcast because by then the Saturn was out yeah and you need to bring it and then it had to be redone so it was made on double the original budget so there was no way they could actually break even with the amount of <laughs> <laughs> that they spent to produce wow. this amazing game uh, like I said, we're being biased here with Chevy, maybe, but it is a great game. Uh, the testimonial time is they had to re-release it due to public demand for a remastered version. That took but years. That took absolute years, but the following did it, and you know, Sony got, got in on the act. And now we've got Shenmue 3 coming uh, finally this Christmas. Even though it's been delayed twice, but it doesn't matter. We waited so many years. What's another two or three years? Yeah. yeah. But any, anyways, guys, uh, I would say uh, so. The Dreamcast at the time, you know, twenty years ago when it came out, um, I think it was kind of hampered from uh, the release of Final Fantasy VIII on the PS One, uh, Pokemon Red and Blue for the Game Boy uh, systems. Uh, 
some great games. Uh, the last by the console didn't last that long because obviously people are waiting for the PS2. But the Dreamcast will always forever well, be in our hearts. Absolutely. Always. So let's start. Um, number 10, if you want to do the honours of the film House of the Dead 2. Now, the special reason behind House of the Dead 2, uh, simple thing, you could use the light guns. Uh, we did multiplayer, myself, my brother, my friends, we used to play all the time and, you know, just shoot about. And, uh, you know, unlock, you had a lot of unlockable versions, you had the arcade version itself, yeah. you know, so there was lots to it, varieties of routes you could take in this. Um, story, you know, if some people are storyline driven, so depending which route you took, it showed you different storylines as well. So there was a lot of aspects. It's just a cracking gory shoot. Uh, it, 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 it you was. You know, um, I, I mean, was going to say, because yeah. this is the first ever game I actually played on the Dreamcast because mm. I was at school. And I didn't really know much about the Dreamcast. And my friend Greg, he uh, said, oh, do you want to come to my house at lunchtime? So I got on the back of his BMX. He rode me to his house. And he had this thing, the Sega Dreamcast. You know, I, I obviously had a PS1 mm. at the time. And I'd never seen graphics like this, you know, full 60 frames per second, you know, really detailed graphics. At that time, year 2000, and uh, he had the gun, and we, we just hammered this. And um, I remember playing that. At, uh, it, it made me a believer. What, Definitely. Was, that, what was that place? Enigma Zone. Enigma Zone in Lincoln. Lincoln. Uh, this was a few years back, but that's where I played the first House of the Dead. That was a uh, local arcade, really. That, that was, it was an yeah. arcade stroke, uh, light, light uh, what do you call that? Um, Oh yeah, laser, you had the laser quest. Uh, yeah. Laser quest in there, but yeah, we had the arcades, and uh, my so and that was the time me and my brother spent a lot to, uh, together, mm -hmm. and uh, we used to go in there, especially to play like arcades like House of the Dead. Yeah, they were Tekken, Tekken two in there. Yes, they, they, yeah. they had the tournament. Um, unfortunately, I couldn't. Then they had Sega yeah. Rally. Uh, in there Sega, as well. oh, they had they had an array. Yeah. I mean, uh, Tekken, Tekken was undoubtedly you know one of the most amazing games at that time. Um, can't say enough about it. Again, PlayStation catalog, we're not going to deviate. But when we played this on the arcades and then we, we played it at home, I mean, slight difference, but you still got that, because of the frame rates, you still got that vintage. But this is the thing that, vintage. although the PlayStation 2 is technically a, a more powerful console, the Dreamcast, I believe, mm -hmm. could render um, graphics a lot faster, oh, no, hence the arcade gameplay, and it, it genuinely was like having your own arcade machine the, the reason, in the comfort of your own One home. of the reasons PlayStation 2 did really well, they bought in, is Sony bringing in DVD technology, whereas the Dreamcast relied on specifically C CD. The G, well, yeah, the, yeah. the GT one, which effectively yeah. a CD. A CD. And, uh, but again, it takes nothing away from the actual credibility of the system. It, like you said, PlayStation was slightly stronger. Slightly massive more power. Ramp up, massive power. How, however, the Dreamcast, what they could push with that beautiful little system. Sorry, I don't have a live display of it here right now, but uh, we'll put some clips into we'll this video. Clips, don't worry. Definitely. <laughs> but um, what what you got for your money with the Dreamcast was truly amazing at that time. At that time, you, yeah, at that time, you definitely. got to consider. I mean, I was an N sixty four player because of the wrestling game. So, but suddenly. Coming on to the drink, it was a different world. I mean, the, the sharper resolution, the frames per second, the size of the games, uh, totally mind blown. Seriously, totally mind blown. And the catalog that came with it, which which was very, very small, small but very small. massively effective. Oh, absolutely. I mean, uh, the only reason I got a Dreamcast in the first place was really for Resident Evil Code Veronica, which we don't have a copy with us today. Yeah. Honorable mention, but. Uh, mm. That was my. I used to borrow my friend's Dreamcast for mm. ten pounds a pop, just to play that game. And then eventually, my mum got me a Dreamcast, mm. and I pretty much got every single game released in uh, the UK. Mm. I mean, but, I uh, had a lot of my friends, even though they bought PS Two at the time, they would come over just so we could play four player simultaneously on Dreamcast on certain games, which we will mention. Uh, again. Great to get everybody involved. This was one great thing about the system. You could play four players simultaneously. Yeah. Uh, I've not got that game here, but it was called Power Stone, the first game I played, and it was consistently just four of us. 
yeah. one big screen, and you were all over. But the genuine fun you had for hours was amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously amazing. And it's a shame we didn't know each other back then, because I feel uh, we would have been great friends, you know. Dream, great friends, dream cast great friends, better rivals. That, that, would, <laughs> that, that would be... Oh, yeah, you mentioned. always beat me on fighting games, uh, though, yeah. you know what I mean, man? He's better than me out of the other ones. But, uh, yeah, fighting Halo games. Halo 2, yeah. Shoot. Halo 2, he kicked my butt on. All right, but then again, I've never played it. So first time I played it, I killed myself. It wasn't even yeah. him killing me. I killed myself. I went off the bridge. So, all right. anyways, guys, uh, we could talk all day. I mean, oh, Dreamcast oh, video. Number nine, Crazy Taxi. Boom. Arcade port, amazing. You know, just hours of fun. Yeah. I mean, I still play this on my iPhone to this mm. very day. Um, I know you didn't play this as much probably as I did. I, I played it. I would I would go through, you could do the arcade version, then you had the actual other playable versions, like learning yeah. tricks. And you learn those oh, tricks. Yeah, the crazy box. Yeah, yeah, crazy box. And then you would try to put them into the arcade version with the same thing. And that took me hours. I was so bad at this game, but I loved it that much. That's what so, I say. You know, if you want to jump on this, you can get it for, for free on your phone mm -hmm. uh, with adverts. You know, easy to play on the mobile phone Absolutely. even. But uh, this will always be the best version for me personally because it have KFC and Pizza Hut in it. <laughs> and it great like, advertising. The Offspring music. You know, th th this game got me into emo and the Offspring mm. and all that. And um, obviously because of the licensing, they can't keep a lot of the brands uh, that they had in here. Mm. I think they had a feeler shop as well. But Crazy Taxi was, again, what the Dreamcast was so good at, mm. it had games which innovated. And obviously, these games have innovated many games that we play today. You know, it was one of the first consoles as well mm. to do online gaming um, in terms of a broad audience. But yeah, Crazy Taxi was mm. a fantastic arcade port and will be forever in my heart, mm. currently on my iPhone. Mm. Anyway, so moving on to number eight, this is a game that we've played with each other quite a lot. Uh, this is the only game that. Uh, made a, mm. a close friend of mine smash a controller against the wall and I kept beating it. You, you needed great reaction, <coughs> especially for powering so, in this. So, uh, although a lot of people probably mm. would have played this on the PS2, which technically was an illegally made version of mm. the game, poor, this original, Dead or Alive 2, is uh, a fantastic fighting game. And the one thing is, if you ever play both copies, you will see how much faster the actual Dreamcast one is. Yeah, uh, faster and actually crisper uh, in yeah. uh, in visual in visual uh, uh, fidelity. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, background. I mean, the first time I played this, would you believe was actually against my sister because she saw female characters, and we literally we were uh, bouncing. Yeah, well, 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 yeah. Well, we won't go into that side. <laughs> no, 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 no we might have children watching yeah. this video. Today. But we didn't know these <laughs> things. Uh, playing against my sister and talk about smashing controllers. My sister would actually take out my controller because I was beating her that badly on it. Yeah. Because she didn't understand the counter system and then after a couple of matches I taught her and honestly it's some of the best games I've ever had but sister if you're what? watching 10-1 10, one, ten oh, that's a little joke between us but that, that's what you've done to me recently. <laughs> yeah that's good. Uh, but yeah honestly if you play this on a through a HDMI uh, upscaler uh, on your Dreamcast today on a modern TV the graphics on this game still hold up Do you today. Know what? They have the not character played. models were some of the best to, at that point of time, the mm. best I'd ever seen. The physics on the game, you know, you mm. could um, have throw your characters through walls, kick them mm. through walls, and it, you know, you had that destructive uh, nature to the uh, the arenas oh, and the stages. Multiple, multiple. <coughs> it wasn't like you just went through one floor. And you could you could go through multiple floors, multiple areas within just the one fight if you knew yeah. which move to use at what area at what time. So I, I think when this came out, this was probably the most technically advanced mm -hmm. game graphically that I've ever played. And the best part about it was characters, if you completed them, uh, with certain characters within certain times and certain <laughs> modes, you could unlock certain uh, yeah. costumes for them. Some characters had even up to six costumes each, and each of them design I mean so so beautifully not you've, got, you've got to pay for costumes today in yeah. games you've I got mean, to... I mean deviating I feel sorry for today's gamers compared to like okay a uh, little bit of age showing in here but when we bought a game for 50 pound you bought a game and you unlocked everything you played yeah. through that bad boy yeah now uh, the new generation and even our generation if we buy a game for say 50 pound we've got to pay at least up to another 100 to 150 pounds through its lifetime to get the DLCs 
uh, special unlockables. That's the case with Dead or Alive Six that came you know, out this year. I don't personally, yeah. I don't agree with this, but that's the way the industry has gone towards now with all this online yeah. gaming, <clears> and that's where they make, you know, their actual income from. So moving on to number seven. Uh, this is a game that I discovered from going to my local Toys of Us and hugging the Dreamcast stand. And I played it on the actual arcades before I got my Dreamcast. So and I, 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 I think this yeah. probably made tennis fashionable in some countries, but virtual tennis is probably the best sports game I've ever played. For me, it was coming back from college, my friends would come with me. Again, four players, we were on it. I mean, it was brilliant. That was the same case in Toys of Us. Yeah, yeah. And, and the best part was that if you beat your other mates, you know, you'd mix around, but the amount of fights we would get into, oh, you're cheating, you've probably learned this, probably like, lend me that, I'm gonna learn. And you know, so we went through it all, but we would play these games hours on end, not getting bored, and then we would take on turns to, uh, to do the arcade mode to unlock King to unlock master, you know, and see which players, uh, you know, whichever player you picked, they had a certain strength, yeah. but then you had to make it up with certain weaknesses they had as well. So you had to get a playability style for each player. Yeah, the, again, graphically, the animations were uh, gone on in this game. The graphics, the port was brilliant from the arcade mode to the Dreamcast. You could yeah. not tell the difference, especially if you played on 60 hertz, you know. Um, Amazing. Oh, I remember those 50 hertz, 60 hertz, those were yeah, the days. Indeed. So, uh, number six, um, this game came out first in Europe uh, mm. with bugs on the disc. So, mm. back in the days, it wasn't so easy to patch games. But, and then when it came out in North America, um, you know, it was pretty much complete. And this led on to the Project Gotham Racing yeah. games. Uh, again, um, innovate, so innovative, the driving style. Metropolis Street Racer. This is yeah. Metropolis Street Racer. <laughs> <Sorry. laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> But uh, again, I was never a big uh, a racing game fan. Uh, the most I probably played was Outrun. This is now going back. For me, yeah, Ridge yeah. Racer and Gran Turismo you know. on PlayStation. Gran Turismo, I used to watch it and everything with my friends. Played it a little bit. But well, this, this is game, different. Yeah. Oh, this game uh, took everything. I mean, Sega Rally was honorable mention there. Great game. Uh, I was a fun, but this game took it to the next level. Like I said, it introduced Qdos system, which Project uh, Project Gotham took on afterwards, Project yeah. Gotham 2, uh, and developed it further. But again, amazing. The real life tracks, the roads of London. So it was uh, cool because you'd, you'd get style yeah. points, kudos for doing yeah. drifts and all that sort of mm -hmm. stuff. And, uh, so when Tokyo Drift came out, this game was very popular because this was one game you could do with and score points, basically. But um, yeah, it's a shame we didn't sell mm -hmm. too well. I mean, you could get this really cheap on eBay. But uh, another thing about uh, this as well, great graphics, but the music. Uh -huh. um, you had all little radio stations, a bit like mm -hmm. uh, Grand Theft Auto. And you know, uh, there's one guy that did all the tracks on this album. And I still listen to this at work on YouTube to this very day. Mm -hmm. uh, I wish there was an official CD or final uh, data records and looking at you. But um, yeah, I mean, you, very, could, very, you, you could pump up the volume on this and eat. And if you had the steering wheel as well, it was like, you know... It, it, it was interesting it. because uh, the thing, although the Dreamcast mm. controller lapped a second analog stick, mm. it was the first uh, controller to have a pressure sensitive shoulder button. So mm. uh, with this compared to, you know, pressing X cross yeah. accelerator on the PS1 mm. pad, playing the race game on the Dreamcast, mm. you've, you know, the acceleration, you could go light or you could go heavy. Yeah. And same, I think that was the most innovative and, uh, about the, the Dreamcast. Hand and the way you do it with the hand gear um, to do the drifts and everything, again, that was pressure sensitive as well. Yeah. Uh, so again, so I, I think that goes unmentioned mentioned sometimes mm. when uh, we talk about the Dreamcast. Mm. Um, innovative controller as well Absolutely. as the VMU. So um, I think this one's a personal one for you. So number six. And number six, I'm going to do a duel. Because I've never played these. Okay, so if you can see the Marvel vs. Capcom, okay, a big brand now. But again, when, when I played this game on the Dreamcast, the speed, the variety, the styles of fighting, I mean, you really had to amp it up and then finally get into the boss. But the unlockable characters in there, I mean, there was so much to this game. Still is, I still discovered new things, how to unlock certain unlockable people. When I now go onto YouTube and people share, oh, I was like, I can remember this. Mm. Go in and then try to reach the achievable targets and unlock them out like, and when I check, oh, and you unlock them, I'm like, oh wow, I didn't even do that. So again, one great thing about the Dreamcast, they knew how to push that system. And it, it well, it introduced the first two-on-two -two fighting, like a Tekken Tag, but with a 2D style, 
You could say that the Dreamcast mm. probably had some mm. of the best fighting games. Oh, uh, or the, the most fighting games at the time on the console. Again, it was like you were playing an arcade. Capcom, oh, Capcom oh. really supported the Dreamcast. Mm. Uh, I mean, all I know about Marvel first Capcom is that number two goes for a lot on eBay. Yeah, I mean, number, money. number two introduced a three on three battle system. And again, you had uh, simultaneously, if you had four players, four players could actually play these games. You know, you could come across together, you just needed to know your button combinations, uh, your mega combos, your cross <coughs> combos are totally amazing. I mean, number two took it to the next level when you could. Uh, Use all uh, three people at the same time to do a mega combo finish. Um, so, but I, I, I wouldn't say the yeah. D-pad on the Dreamcast controller was really good for fighting games. So, did you use the arcade stick? The Can I be honest? I because I was a Mega Drive player, so I was used to the um, analog. I mean, not the analog. Well, that the D-pad, D-pad was a lot better than the Dreamcast one. To be fair, wasn't yeah, it? It, it was. was. It was because I had the interconnectables yeah. as well. Yeah. But it was just becoming used to it, and uh, with the D-pad, it. It was just preference, really. I mean, I had a lot of people that, that could beat me using the uh, D-pad, but a lot of the times, because I was using characters like Ryu and, and uh, changing his form to Ken and then to Akuma, which you could do in there if you knew what, what buttons and combinations to use. Again, just so much variety with one player, and again, the move styles would change totally as well, and the combo styles would change, just with one character, and that's within the first game, let alone getting to the second game. But again, um, Number one, you can pick up cheaply. You can still pick it up for something yeah. like ten pound in good condition. Yeah. Number two, like Jason said, yeah, it does go for a lot of money. So prize possession. There's some other mentions we can put in there, but we'll do that later. Yeah. To do with fighting games. Yeah. So going on to, um, I think we're at number number four now, aren't mm-hmm. we? So uh, this is a game uh, I don't think you actually played, did you? But no. uh, this game that I got when it first released. So. At the time when the, the Dreamcast was out, uh, the PS1 was the king of JRPGs, but the Dreamcast had a few golden gems. Mm-hmm. So, Scars of Arcadia. This is the most requested game for the Dreamcast to be remastered, and uh, hopefully Sega will mm. do something about this someday like they have done with Shenmue. Well, but my experience with this is on the other front is, bought the game, oh, can I borrow it? My cousin said, yeah, borrowed it, never got it back. Same thing happened with my friend who lived down the street, never got it back. So that's why I never got to play this. So I bought this game recently. I got it for a great price, about £65. Uh, but when I went to look again for, uh, to get a copy for my other friend, like minimum starting price was £75. And I was just like, yeah. wow. And then I saw some copies for, like I said before, £150. And I was just like, maybe I'll wait until Christmas now, you know, um, before I splurge out that much. So, you know, I loved everything about this game. You know, um, being a massive Final mm-hmm. Fantasy fan, this is really close to those mm-hmm. c- kind of games. You know, the graphics are great, the story was great, the music was great, and it was just cool being a, a, a pirate, pirate <laughs> with a ship in I the remember, air. I remember you said the Dreamcast had a special a thing about it that you could bump other ships or something like that yeah, with, yeah. The, with the controller. So, um, But um, if you ever get a chance to get a copy of this or, you know, you you're willing to pay the money for it, mm-hmm. please do. But Sega, yeah, please remaster this. So, we're now on a game number three. I'm, I'm, I'm losing track of numbers here. <laughs> we're we're, so, on, a, we're um, on our top three now. So, I think this is a very special game. Uh, this is the game I've probably played the most on the Dreamcast because uh, it's so addictive. It's probably the best 3D fighter of all time. Um, I'll let you do the honours. Uh, uh, so w- we both agree on this. Soul Calibur, back in the day, this game got even uh, guys like my brother who were not into playing uh, video games. Played it, he loved it, and the hours on end we would verse each other just trying to learn a fighting style with one character, let alone yeah. all the characters you had in there, and then the way you could customise the uh, beginning, uh, the openings as well, once you unlocked certain uh, features. And the variety of weapons you could get. I mean, the modes. I mean, for one game to have so much, and that it was one of the first games to come out on the Dreamcast. Uh, I, I think it is one of the holy grails of the Dreamcast. That, you know, this was an arcade port, mm. but had more detailed graphics, and it's arcade forebearer. Um, the, the moves 
you could do. There were so many. Um, it was a far superior game to Soul Blade. The colours, the graphics, the speed. This was just the perfect fighting game, and you could just play for hours on end and never get bored. I mean, the, uh, the modes. Still the, best, still the best one in the series. So, by the, far. And, and the challenges in the modes that you would get, like on a single bar, the survival modes they would put in, or get a certain hit combo. I mean, there was so much variety to it. Like, you can only use, you could use all these variety of rooms, but only certain ones would hurt your opponent. I mean, once you go into other arenas and everything, again, the arena, the design of the arenas back yeah. in the day. Yeah, the character yeah. design. Oh, it's so beautiful. The, the, this is an example of the perfect game. Mm. Uh, this could arguably, be, arguably uh, mm. be in the top 20 or 10 games of all, all time. time. I mean, and the testimony is Soul Calibur is still, you know, they're coming out with more installments every every couple of years. But to be taken from Soul Blade to be calling Soul Calibur and keeping that name is a testament to that actual game. <laughs> Yeah. And even we we did we played this about two three years ago when we even got my brother playing it, yeah. and even then we had that much fun. We could see that naturally it was not as fast as the new installments, but even then, the graphics were still decent. I mean they've aged. Of course it's going to happen slightly, but the playability yeah. was still there. I That's mean, the most important thing. Absolutely. Uh, Nintendo Switch is uh, a testimony to that uh, in today's climate. So number two. Um, this is a game I'm going to get on the Nintendo Switch. Um, and I've had the pleasure of playing many times. And this is a very sought after title. And, uh, Grand Deer 2. So, uh, what, the, uh, what can you say a, about Grand Deer 2? Just giving a little Short history. And sweet. <laughs> a little quick history on this one. I'm not a history buff, but if I know something, I'd like to say it. The original game was made for the Saturn. And then it was ported to the PlayStation That's 1 right. yeah. after the Saturn's demise, unfortunately. But again, the PlayStation version was nowhere near as good as the Saturn version. And this is a testimony, again, to what the Dreamcast pushed, uh, Sega products pushed. It was ported to the PlayStation 2. Again, it wasn't nothing compared to the actual Dreamcast version. It was actually crisper graphics and faster frame rate. And, and a few more unlockable things actually within the game which did not transfer over to the uh, PlayStation 2 port. So, so if, if, if you used to sell this to a Final Fantasy fan, would, they, oh. would it be their kind of... Definitely. I mean, anybody who loves RPGs, this is definitely your 50 hour plus game. Uh, lots to unlock, lots of... Um, it, wasn't, it wasn't your traditional turn based, but you, you had a meter. And then uh, unlock it. You had to go and use certain uh, magics and weapons to unlock uh, certain uh, special moves that you could use with your basic yeah. weapon. And then item, naturally having items to quicken up your speed, turn, like a haste, but it would be an item you would use, not a magic spell. And uh, you know, getting equipment, going back into certain levels to get again more equipment. Uh, so you had a lot of grinding to do on there if you wanted to, but the best thing about this game, you could get through it quickly, or like any other game, you could take your time, yeah. appreciate it, go through, you had a lot of save points, which was brilliant about this game. So you could literally memorize where the save points were, go there, save, turn off you had work to do, come back, and literally get straight back into it. I mean, literally, and the, uh, what you call, the um, videos on it that you got, Oh, so it's got CG videos. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Had, but they kept it to the in-game graphics. Oh, right, yeah. And totally amazing because... A bit like what they did on uh, Final Fantasy VII. And, Absolutely. Uh, yeah, yeah. And, uh, but the way he said, so you, you were always involved, you were always interactive, even with the videos and the way the cameras turned around it. Definitely one for the ages. One standing, to, uh, you know, test of time and with the remake coming through, showing what a brand Grand AA is. Unfortunately, the other ones were not released in England, like Grand Air 3, which was released in Brazil. That might be coming to Nintendo Switch. So, um, there you go, guys. Okay. So, uh, number well, one is um, two titles. Is, yeah. We're going to keep this short this week because I'm sure we could do mm. a video that goes oh. on a, an hour about this game. Uh, we'll, do, we'll do that think, before Shenmue 3 comes out. I think we will do oh, it. Uh, there you go, we've already revealed it. <laughs> Shenmue 1 oh. and 2. Important note, this version did not come out in the US. Uh, it came out in Japan mm. and certain European countries. So we were lucky to get this. Um, Americans, uh, their first mm. foray into this title would have been on the Xbox. 
Uh, I'm sure that'll be in an Xbox top 10 video when we do that. I've got it. So, for me, um, I don't think we can say what hasn't been said before. If you're watching this, mm -hmm. there's no doubt you had this game. Every Dreamcast owner has okay. played Shemmy. Always okay. got a Dreamcast get Shemmy. So again, go in, in the beginning of the video we mentioned. It, it's the, not even it, just the budget alone for this. Like it was it, it was more than a movie was made on basically. I, so I, I think she, for me, Shenmue is at the time when it came out, mm -hmm. it was like nothing I'd ever played for. It was more than a game. This was mm -hmm. a simulation of sorts of real life or the closest mm -hmm. simulation to real life at the time. You know, I mean, there was a game called The Sims. Fair enough, but this took Sims to the actual new level. And I remember just practicing, you could go into your own dojo in this, into your father's dojo as the main character, practicing your martial arts, unlocking, yeah. unlocking the moves initially. And I remember my mum coming in to my room, so I'm like, oh, uh, what are you doing? And she saw it, she saw I was watching an action movie. Because the graphics at that time was so amazing, <laughs> and the moves were so clearly done, so, I mean... It was just amazing to watch, like that it fooled my mom into thinking that there was actually somebody practicing yeah. martial arts. And um, but oh, it, it, the events alone yeah. in this, I mean, just introduced quick time offense uh, into the game. Well, mm -hmm. but I'll, I'll say if it, when I first put this game on, watched the famous intro uh, action scene. Uh, when you come out of your bedroom, you have to look around the house, you open up a load of drawers, which was totally new in the video mm -hmm. game at the time. I just remember walking out into the estate and you know, this ambient music. I was just sat there alone and mm -hmm. I'd never had a feeling. Mm -hmm. uh, it gave me such a, a really nice, fuzzy feeling. Mm -hmm. And then just walking around, oh, talking to people, right? the cheesy dialogue. And then you end up in the, the local uh, sure? town, High Street, and you go around shops, you, you can buy stuff, you but can go just, on let's just go arcade into the machines. Just, it, just with number one like in the beginning. Uh, to people did, who did have you not get played. that feeling as well? You know, when you, I, this game it, made me so it, emotional. Just the like, opening. It was weird. It was just uh, the warm, opening of it. Feel, yeah. it, it, it was so emotional. Uh, I don't. Yeah. I don't want to give away spoilers, but what? But the uh, the whole story of it is about Ro uh, going about and uh, finding why his father was killed. Um, but the way they decide and just simple things. You could go into the fridge. Open a fridge and you see carrots. You remember yeah, that? Yeah, and then it activates a cutscene. And a cutscene into his childhood about how his father explaining why people work hard and how they're working hard so you can eat. Just simple things like that. And I was it's made just, me appreciate carrots a lot. I mean, more. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah there, you get, there you go. It, but, it teaches you a life lesson. Absolutely. And then the amazing, I mean, like I said, we could talk for hours, but we're just going to keep it quick. But every time you go through this game, you will discover something new. Yeah. Every I, I, time. I think the thing to take away about Shemu at the time, this is the most advanced action adventure game that ever came out. Um, it pushed the boundaries of gaming. It made me wear a watch, you know, <laughs> because in this game the watch was very important. Every four oh, yeah. minutes, every four minutes of real time, equated to one hour yeah. within the game time. Yeah. And this guy actually had a uh, cut-off time, so he had a... Um, because you could go through Christmas yeah. on this, couldn't you? You could go through Christmas, but he had a sleeping time. So if he wasn't home by half ten or eleven o'clock, he would get home, he would get his sleep. Yeah. And then you would have to start again, you know, certain things. So you had to make sure you decided to do a task on a certain point of time. But um, with Shenmue as well, uh, a lot of games of today, to, of today yeah. have a lot to owe to Shenmue. This was Absolutely. the most innovative game at its time. It is still an experience today. Please and check this out if you have it done already. The engine they used for the fighting was actually from the Virtual Fighter yeah. engine. So it wasn't like you were just getting half a game or something. You got a This had arcade package. game. You could play old Sega arcade this games. This game started off, started off the trend of going into actual old Sega catalog games like Space Harrier, Outrun. Outrun for the ages, yeah. amazing game. But uh, you even could practice your QTEs within the arcades. And again, there was a cut-off time, like this guy would get bored, you'd move it on, yeah. you'd go practice your moves. You could, you, oh, could, no. you could go to a telephone box and order pizza or... Mm -hmm. it, you could go into a part, the best part I think it was that you could, every time you get a new move, you see the proficiency of it, and then you would have to actually practice and practice yeah. and practice. And it wasn't like, okay, you got to one level, there could be multiple levels of a move. I remember Fire Break Arm. A lot of uh, RPG elements. Yeah. 
So it, the the amount of mechanics this game introduced, oh, it, you know, it was amazing. the environment, because this is based on a real life area of Japan. Mm. Uh, this one, you know, the, and a the, lot of people visit it, especially after playing this game. They actually go to Japan and put up, you know, selfies of themselves on certain streets. Yeah, yeah. and uh, obviously we won't go to Shenmue 2 in this video, but Shenmue 2 was a much bigger game on a larger scale and it just pushed the envelope even mm -hmm. further. But I think that's going to conclude our yeah. top 10. So I think we'll go through some honorable uh, mentions. Ooh. We've got quite a few here. This is just some of my so, collection, but um, we've got a lot more if we <laughs> turned around, but definitely, Capcom vs SNK and Street Fighter Alpha 3. Um, lots of hours into this, the fight styles, again, um, you could have up to four players on one side versus just one player, depending on how powerful one character was. So the difficulties on the amazing uh, variety, uh, playable modes, unlockables, again, amazing. And, and the rating system in there, uh, that you have to do to get a certain unlockable and versus certain people mm. again fantastic now this is one that jason loves the most um so i love these games uh, a lot of people don't like the 3d sonic games uh, these were the best 3d sonic games but um these were cracking games i used to mm. play the head out of these on the dreamcast especially mm. sonic Adventure 2 which is massively underrated mm. you know i just kept replaying levels all the time to get the best times but mm. the sonic and shadow levels amazing uh, this goes for a lot on eBay. Uh, you can download this on the uh, PS3, Xbox 360, PC, mm -hmm. but yeah, cracking games. The best of Sonic I by mean, the, far. This, the first Sonic game which I have played, unfortunately, I haven't played number two yet. But I like these more than the original two yeah. games, but that's, um, just, me. that's but just me. When I saw it and the speed, the frame rate, uh, the again, the background, totally amazing. I mean, uh, the storyline in there as well was pretty and you had uh, a version of tamagotchi in there you could raise mm. animals so for, for people who are into it back in the late into the mid to late 90s so that's uh, good use of the vmu as well yeah, yeah again and then you could keep raising it on on your actual vmu the actual uh, creature that you're raising or your egg fe uh, feeding your creature on time you could do it so you could take it with you yeah. basically so guys, uh, continuing on our um, honourable mentions, mm -hmm. we've also got here uh, Fantasy Star Online, uh, one of the first uh, well-known console online mm -hmm. RPGs. Um, I'll say I tried playing this online and then wrapped up a massive phone bill because back in 2000 uh, we only had a dial-up connection, I didn't even have proper internet. As NPL and Diamond Cable were still being placed about, so limited places had that type of connection yeah. and deals that we have today. Missed those days, but it was cheap once you had it. Yeah. You know. I mean, it's one of my favourite games. I understand this is a massive fun oh, favourite. Yeah. Um, um, did you play for it? I I played the off, offline. I started to play the online. Uh, you could contact other people. The fascinating thing about this game. It's Naturally, a different experience. It was absolutely time. different. It's a new experience. Experience. Create your own character. Uh, so it's something like your MMORPGs, basically. It is. But you created your own character. You could build up your skills offline mode, and then you could go to your online mode. Uh, contact other people naturally, build your parties, but you were going in teams of four anyway from your offline mode and then you met up with the other people, you know, playing online. Um, uh, again, what the system was pushing at that time, you know, with the built-in modem, again, revolutionary voice time. Yeah. Um, I, I won't say it's the prototype, but Xbox did. I think it's uh, to be... Actually, I think the Sega Saturn in Japan mm. had a mode then. They so, did, but I think it was only uh, you could compare scores. Not many games you could play across, yeah. apart from Street Fighter. I know Street yeah. Fighter was one of the games. And, uh, I remember getting a Choo Choo Rocket for the Dreamcast, oh, which yeah. is, uh, for a fiver. That was the first game you could actually play online on the Dreamcast. Yeah, um, i say another favourite of mine was Unreal Tournament. Uh, mm. It wasn't online in this country, but mm. the US version uh, had the online functionality and uh, me and some friends used to play that a lot. I think there was Quake 3 as well. That, yeah, that was online. Yeah, yeah, in the that UK, was that was online. Yeah. Again, fascinating game, but for me, this one stood out. Yeah. Uh, Storyline, character yeah. build-up, skills. Again, visual, <laughs> the, the graphics at that time that the system was pushing. I mean, yeah, it will be dated now. But if you still see back then and see how impressive it was, yeah. and the detail, I mean, details and putting, you can still go back and play a game like this. So playability, it's still there to a certain degree. It was just ahead of its time, Oh, oh it? absolutely. I mean, even if, you, even if you say ahead of its time, at that time, 
because you see something so good, even just say it it became a benchmark, basically. Definitely. You know, so. so, moving on. Um, I'll say this was uh, a game that I liked, especially after playing a lot of uh, Smackdown on the PS1, WWF Royal Rumble. And it was still at that time called WWF. Um, yeah. This was actually a straight arcade port. Uh, that's the only problem I had with this game. Again, introduced nine players on screen at once. Uh, again, after that, only the PS, realistically, PS3 has been able to do something that well. I mean, PS2 pushed it to some levels, but couldn't get as smooth as this game. It was just another staple um, in the arsenal of the Dreamcast stuff. Oh, this was a true arcade that literally, game console. Literally, it yeah. was an arcade port. Now, the fascinating thing about this game is if they had just introduced a storyline, you know, <laughs> into a storyline mode, like what SmackDown was based yeah. on, you know, and even going a little bit back, uh, N64, and even though those games are still in the top 10 of all time playables in the wrestling games, like No Mercy, just a little storyline put into there with those graphics, that engine, uh, especially if they had like what they have now uh, going into these WWE, you know, uh, games. Uh, if they just put in like the Rock and Sock connection, that was the reason I bought it. I was a wrestling fan. I'm sorry, I'm guilty at that time. I was as well. And yeah. uh, just that uh, a, a juxtaposition that you got the guy who thinks he's the greatest and you got the guy who thinks he's just scum. You bring them together and you have fun. Literally, that was it. And this game kind of let you do that because you could be both of them yeah. and they were a legitimate tag mm -hmm. team. So that was the reason I went out and got this at a good price, as you can see the case. Yeah. So another one I will mention, which was also popular on mm. the Dreamcast booths and Toys Us, and it stores. came with the starter bundles. Yeah, yeah, uh, ready to rumble boxing. Um, um, I played quite a lot of this. Um, did you? Funny, <laughs> mate. This game was awesome. Um, it was funny. Mm. Funny is the way that came to it. You literally enjoyed yourself. Um, as, I, as I say, something from my terms was back in the days we had jokes. Um, yeah. Like, we would play it, just some of the stuff that the characters, you know, little voiceovers come out, like, um, I joke about it even now to this day, one of the characters you can unlock, his name's Angel, and Latino, and he comes out with the accent. After, if you want to fight, he'll go, he'll look around and say, hey, what happened? So, <laughs> Uh, like well, little it, things like that. The graphics really. and the animations were quite revolutionary at I the time, especially with this game, wasn't it? I, 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 I think the mm. graphics were par. I don't think mm. they were great. Mm. I don't think they were. I think they were decent. But it was the playability, multiple characters, different mm. styles, different combos, and then it's just the uniqueness of each character. And then going through it, unlocking, and it actually had one of the best intros. Mm. It had Michael Buffer. Yeah. Let's get ready to rumble! Couldn't beat it. And then, uh, another honourable mention, Sega Rally, one of the uh, launch games, I believe, for uh, the Dreamcast. Again, a great port from the arcade to the console, um, especially if you had the steering wheel. Yeah. And acceleration. I mean, you got a bit of jolts in it, um, compared to what everything is included in the DualShocks today. Mm -hmm. But I think you were more the expert on this one. Yeah, I didn't play as uh, much of this. I'll play Metropolis Street Race yeah. a lot in that uh, Ferrari Challenge. Mm, uh, and, Ferrari uh, Challenge 355. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I will say that uh, in terms of the driving game, mm. the one I played a lot, which we haven't got here today, mm. is an uh, 18 wheeler American Pro yeah, Truck. Yeah, I remember that one. But <laughs> one great thing, like I said, direct port, you did not miss anything from the arcade onto this port. If anything, it added more features in. And this is something I said, going to the honorable mention of Royal Rumble, they just added a few more features in. Uh, would have been mm. this get uh, that game would have been probably in my top 10 however Sega Rally like I said it will always be dead because it was one of those games you remember going to the arcade to play and then yeah. you can you know a little bit you know this is what we call retro you can go back sit down put in nostalgia when you play it once you got the right TV the, there's nothing unless you've got a certain HDMI the, dream, the Dreamcast also had a lot of decent uh, PS1 ports as well like the uh, Soul Reaver game uh, oh, yeah, Resident yeah. Evil 2 and 3 they had the N64 uh, the Tomb games, Raider well. games they had yeah. Shadow Man uh, oh Shadow Man yeah I've got, I'd say I've got a lot of these quite cheap yeah. um, I've still got it. I say it's a shame we haven't got Jet Set Radio here today or Resident oh. Evil Code Fonica um, if you're a fan of Crazy Taxi uh, Jet Set Radio on will mention it has to be in there I think um, we've already, I think we've yeah. probably already mentioned it. <laughs> I can't remember because we've been filming yeah. this for quite a while now. Yeah. Um, 
uh, trying to think some other games for a Headhunter that never came out oh, in America. Yeah. That was a good game. Uh, Any other games you could think of that come to mind? Uh, Can I be okay. honest? Uh, you had games like uh, Time Stalkers. It was like a vampire, and it was an RPG based, oh, yeah. based. Decent, uh, not in my top 10, honorable mention because they had a certain style about it. Yeah. Same with the Spawn game. Uh, there was a Spawn uh, game out, I've actually got it. I'll uh, Next time I'll bring it and um, we'll put it for display. But again, worthy mention, they tried something with that. It wasn't that popular, unfortunately. It mm -hmm. wasn't everybody's cup of tea, but at least they tried to put out some variation. And that was the best thing about Dreamcast. I mean, I wish I had the copy of uh, Resident Evil. We talked about it before. Uh, Resident Evil uh, Code for the code. Code yeah, for the code. yeah. Um, visually, one of the most beautiful games I've ever seen when when the console started. Yeah, I mean, but that was your niche. Yeah. Game. So uh, yeah, we've reached the end of the video. Twenty yeah. years of the Dreamcast. I mean, yeah. and and I'll be honest. What with a legacy! You, great legacy, and to date, you can pick up most of these games and still have that fun. I yeah. mean, naturally, you're gonna look uh, nowadays for for crisper graphics more fluid in scene now with characters, background leaders, but if you just want fun, like I say, at our arcade, that was the purpose of the Dreamcast. Yeah, I think for the generation, the Dreamcast, mm -hmm. you know, compared to say the PS2, there's a lot of arguments about it. I think it was the faster, more crisper oh, okay. console, whereas um, further on down the line, mm -hmm. the PS2 and the Emotion Engine could push out oh, more detailed yeah. graphics. I mean, the PS2 with the catalogue it came with, with the loyalty it came with, with, with the PS1. Oh yeah, uh, mm -hmm. I mean, it took on Microsoft to rival them because, you know, let's be honest, it's all business at the end of the day. Yeah, yeah. They, they had the money. Sega, unfortunately, were on their way out by then uh, because they couldn't they couldn't contend because one thing Sega always did wrong, they made more games in house than give to third parties. Where this is where uh, PlayStation ruled. Well, the, at the time, you get a lot of people blaming uh, mm. EA of uh, for you know some of the uh, playing a part in the downfall mm. of the Dreamcast. But at the um, same time, because of EA, Sega made their own sports games, which made them popular. Uh, and that, some of those sports games are a lot better than what yeah. EA ever made. Oh, absolutely. absolutely. I yeah. mean, the two two K games. Yeah. Uh, ridiculously popular. Mention it, uh, the 2K basketball games were phenomenal. Um, mm. Didn't get to play much, unfortunately, because I enjoyed those in multiplayer. But everybody, was, like I said, I was more into the tennis game, virtual tennis. Uh, but again, great game. If you ever get to play, the chance to play this console, especially with your friends. I mean, I think as well, the thing that probably led uh, easily quite to the demise of the Dreamcast was mm. the fact that it was so easy just to get self-booting copied games and play them. Uh, that still happens today. Would you believe when the Dreamcast stopped in, in Europe, in Japan, places like Brazil were still producing games for it until Actually, 2007? Yeah, in Japan, in Japan they were still making get games to that year as well. Yeah. Only if like, yeah, some of them yeah. shmup game, you know, oh, shmup yeah. games, you know, shmup games. But the only problem with using dummy copies or these false games was the laser. Uh, the worst that, it, guys, if yeah. you get a Dreamcast, protect the laser, mm. When you play copy games, it will kill your laser much quicker than it will do playing a, a original game. A lot of my friends keep asking me, how, how do your system still play after 20 years? First thing, I never put uh, anything that is not original in there. Keep it clean, literally. Uh, keep it out of sunlight. Keep it out of sunlight. If it goes it yellow, get, uh, look up Retro Brighton mm -hmm. on Google. Mm -hmm. And main thing <coughs> is keep it away from dust. Make sure you regularly dust your systems or keep them in... <laughs> You know, it's like food, that's why I keep them in a, uh, in a storage area that's nice and clean. I keep mine in boxes. But you say, um, if, you, if you're playing a Dreamcast on a normal modern day flat screen TV, there are mm -hmm. a lot of different uh, cables and connectors you can get. VGA cables, HDMI uh, mm -hmm. boxes. There's all sorts and um, uh, what was the special one that they uh, bought out for it so you could keep up to date with the new Oh, there was this one from the Bihar where it's called the Akuma. Mm -hmm. Um, so it's a box that goes into the back of your Dreamcast mm -hmm. and then you have a HDMI cable and then you can flick different switches mm -hmm. with different filters. But it wasn't cheap, you were telling me it was quite expensive. Um, hundred dollars, hundred dollars, yeah, 80 pounds. So, yeah. if anybody's rich out there, first off, hello, uh, second off, <laughs> so I'm not joking, uh, from what Jason's told me, it was fantastic to use, especially with modern TVs, 4K TVs. Uh, so I'm thinking of getting one myself mm -hmm. once I reset up all my systems and hopefully we can do a video about that. Uh, yeah, yeah, I think we should do a few more of these videos, don't you reckon? We'll uh, do a top uh, 10 Xbox, probably top 10 PS2, absolutely, and yeah. uh, PS1 perhaps. 
Yeah. Uh, we could even go back to the Mega Drive. That's where I started. That's where I started. Well, actually, I started from the Nintendo. Well, the, the, the Mega Drive, the new art scene. But uh, yeah. Sega, if, if you are watching this, I don't know you are. Or, um, Please consider doing a Dreamcast Mini uh, some t at some Absolutely. point down the line. And I think uh, it'll make you a lot mm. of money. One thing is make sure it's a, it's not one of those third party emulators. Well, that, this is the thing they've got right with yeah. the uh, the Sega Mega Drive Mini because you mm -hmm. had uh, AT games or yeah. app games. The problem they is call the, these different the ones, mini consoles. The ones they brought up before with AT and T or AT and M. This cheap Chinese knockoffs. Cheap Chinese knockoffs. So when this did we get? This yeah. one has genuinely been made by mm. Sega and uh, a genuine uh, mm. company that does a lot of remasters mm. of old uh, port, uh, well, the porting um, company called M2. The one thing with today's generation, one thing again with Sega, um, if, if fans are out there, make sure if you can pre order, you can even customize it. I mean, that's more money for Sega, realistically, but it's more personal to yourself as well. So, like for me, I'm a big Shami fan. Um, mm. That game really turned me to what a game should be, that is the it, benchmark for It me. took them long enough to do the, the remaster yeah. for modern mm. day consoles, Absolutely. but please fix the shadows, Sega, because <laughs> they do my head in. I still play mine on the Dreamcast. <clears throat> and actually the Xbox 2 port, I mean the Xbox port for Chemu 2, that was very good. It had, uh, even though it's a quick, we're going off to sing, but because it's a Sega game, yeah. uh, it had multiple shadings. You could play it uh, from multiple levels. You had the white button, on the thing, so you could play it as the original Dreamcast, mm. or you could play it as the Xbox, the new enhanced version of it, or you could even go back older to black and white mm. version. Mm. So it gave you great variety. You could take camera shots. Mm. Camera shots opened up uh, mm. secrets in there. And but in the Shenmue 2 Dreamcast version, once you finished it, everything that you played, the mini games in there, you could unlock, and you could find out where you didn't go to to unlock some more or find out more. Like I said. Phenomenal game. The more you play it, the more you find out about it and more events you find yeah. out. But I said, phenomenal console. Was it ahead of its time? I won't say it was ahead of its time, but I think it was the right time, just not appreciated for what it really was. But at least a lot of the key games have been remastered oh, or yeah. ported over to subsequent I mean, that, that's consoles. What, that's why it's called class or, uh, Classics. I mean, when a game has such great playability, yeah. I mean, and these games have legacies now. Um, mm -hmm. Even the, some of the creators don't want to do sequels to them. Why? Because they can't re recreate that magic, so to speak. That sometimes there's just a certain generation or a certain time where that game will do well. well and these games have crossed those generations. I think you can agree. When you first played on the Dreamcast, mm -hmm. you knew you was playing something special. Every time. I mean, uh, uh, Soul Calibur was, I think, the first. Yeah. Can I be honest? I got goosebumps when you, when you mentioned Soul Calibur again. Yeah. One, of, one of the, I mean, you just amazing game you had fun you with this game you could button bash or you could learn the combos but everybody had a chance with that game and that's why i think you had fun because you could be coming as a total novice or you could be a total master and you yeah. would have a 50 50 and that's true the master guys they mm. know you know if you block you parry mm. things i learned much later on i was a button basher all right but i learned it much later Still on today Okay, yeah, okay. Yeah. Just because you lose to me because of it. Yeah. Though. All right. Yeah, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Now we have some great matches. I think we're again we're gonna put some videos of me and him doing some Tekken games, where this man is the master of the buttons, where I'm button bashing, but bashing matters. <laughs> you love me, you know that. But anyways, guys, um, I think we've covered everything about the Dreamcast. Mm -hmm. uh, happy twentieth to the Dreamcast. Absolutely. And uh, we will see you in the next one. If there is a next one. Yeah. See you I later, have, guys. I hope there's a next one. <laughs> to, to Sushi UK. Josh Phoenix. See you later. See you later. Cut.